Hi everyone. Good evening. How are you all? I'm Dwani from Geeks for Geeks, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. So today's guest speaker is an SD intern at PayPal, and I'm really humbled to welcome Ujwal Mittal. Hi, Ujwal. Yeah. Hi, Dwani. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm great too. It's really an honor to have you here, Ujwal. I mean, I read your profile. Being a college student and getting SD intern at PayPal—that's quite an achievement. And I would like to take up this opportunity to welcome you and welcome you to kindly introduce yourself. Yeah. So hello everyone. So I am Ujwal Mittal, and I am currently a final year student at JP Institute of Information Technology, Noida. And uh, yeah, I'm currently interning at PayPal. and it's an off campus opportunity yeah so that's pretty much all right so ujwal like you are a current student can you tell us like what was the preparation route that you took to crack the various exams and the interviews yeah so basically uh, let's start from the very first year of my college so the first year of college what i did is that i took a uh, special focus on maintaining the cgpa because i thought that in my third and the fourth year uh, there will be a specific time which i will be dedicating to placements so i will not been able to put a special emphasis on college studies so i just took time to like increase my cgpa and yeah i pretty i chilled a lot in my first year since uh, it was like uh, free from the jee mein and jee advance so that's why it was not that much uh, hectic and uh, coming to my preparation strategy so also in first year what i did is that i explored a lot of things i just don't make my mind that i will do one thing what i did is that i explored uh, like front end development okay since html css was also going on in the college so i explored that as well the front end part also like i was introduced by uh, i was introduced hackerang like it was a coding platform uh, by my seniors so basically i just dived into it and uh, see like what it is there inside so i just started uh, solving some very basic problems on hackerang and initially i uh, started gaining interest onto it i was not enjoying that much uh, with front end development it was kind of a little bit boring for me like uh, like uh, like we have to just arrange the pixels and something like that so it was not i feel like it was not my cup of tea so i started diving deep into data structures and algorithms part yeah so first year basically i did hacker rank and uh, then in second year i just started with code chef okay so i then um, explored machine learning as well i uh, so in machine learning initially i started gaining interest but there was lot of algorithms which were going on a lot of uh, like different stuff which was going beyond my head so i just stopped it and uh, then i explored back end web development in my second year as well so the back end web development is something which i was uh, getting interest on i started like uh, interacting with the back end part so i got to know that uh, i will do computer programming and back end web development in these four years of college and let's see what happens so yeah in the second year i started giving uh, the code chef contest uh, basically at that time code chef long contest was pretty much popular now it's code forces but at that time code forces long contest was popular so i gave uh, started giving code forces long contest and uh, initially i used to solve two to three problems and then i just started solving a lot of problems uh, since i was started getting practice onto it and uh, then what happened is in the late part of second year uh, yeah i got pretty decent rank on code forces on sorry on code chef i got 2000 rated so then i started like uh, jumping onto code forces code forces was something like which was really challenging for me since it was a really uh, timed contest and the problems are arranged in a Uh, like in a great sequence like they were in a strictly in increasing order as compared to to code chef where like the problems strictly jumps from the basic level to a very hard level so code forces was uh, like i enjoyed solving problems on code forces and uh, then i guess at the end of third year i uh, started doing lead code as well so i got a pretty mix of competitive programming and dsa as well so uh, yeah these two things definitely helped me So in fourth year, I just started applying to off-campus opportunities as much as I can, and uh, all these things which I have done in the like second and third year, be it computer programming, be it DSA, and some projects on backend web development. So these helped me to crack exams and interviews. So if I just sum it up, you need to be good at DSA, 
uh, you can do competitive programming or lead code. It's your choice, whatever you like it. And you need to be good at projects as well. See, you need to uh, put some projects on your resume. So you need to be good at projects which you have put. Also, you need to be good at uh, the computer science fundamentals like OOPs, DBMS, which we will talk later. Yeah, so that's pretty much about it. Your experience is the perfect example for a student, you know, who is exploring a lot of opportunities. Because honestly, I too am a student. I am actually a junior, so you know, like it's like you explore a lot of things, then you find something that you like, but that might actually not be the thing for you. So you move on to new opportunities, and I mean, there's a lot of things that are there out there that you can learn. And you know, like we, uh, a beginner should never restrict themselves. to just one domain because you never know where your interest will go yeah so that's quite inspiring so i'm sure you explored a lot of opportunities other than your hd intern role so can you tell us what are the various opportunities for entry level engineers at paypal yeah so basically paypal comes to a lot of good colleges prima colleges for on campus placements and they basically hire for hd intern role as well as hd full time role uh coming on to the off campus placements like uh the colleges in which paypal doesn't go to so for off campus placements uh they basically open their hiring drive in november or december uh the openings get uh, filled pretty quickly so you just get one or two day okay so make sure you get refer on to that so yeah i get uh, i guess uh there's an opening for sd intern at paypal and they basically don't hire for sds uh, whatever sd interns they get they basically convert into ppo i'm talking in terms of off campus placements for on campus uh, they come for both the roles like sd intern and sd full time okay so basically the intern procedure starts in november yeah november or december something like that right so since you were going through this whole procedure what was your personal experience like yeah so uh, you're talking in terms of off campus placements yeah yeah so basically uh, what happened is uh, yeah whenever i see a, any particular opening on linkedin so basically i used to approach the people who are working in that product based company so i approach used to approach them for the referral and majority of times they were very happy to refer me based on my profile in computer programming or in dsa so yeah after uh, getting a referral uh, even though i got a referral like there was a good chance that my resume doesn't get shortlisted so there is one thing which happens a lot in off campus placements okay so uh, let's suppose the resume does get shortlisted then basically what happens is we get introduced to the uh, coding round the first round is the coding round so yeah after the coding round basically uh, there were technical interviews and uh, the technical interviews were based on dsa and uh, uh, yeah so for dsa they basically asked some questions on uh, trees uh, linguist the interview process was pretty standard but the coding round were yeah, the coding round was really great uh, it had some good questions on to it uh, the questions were on like medium i would say medium to medium hard level as far as coding round is concerned but yeah technical interviews it was a pretty standard process right so since the transition from student to a working professional is quite overwhelming so what was the most difficult and overwhelming part of your preparation journey and how did you overcome it yeah so the most overwhelming part was that in getting the resume shortlisted yeah that was the most overwhelming part for any student who is like uh, into off campus placements if there's some kind of chance that even if you get a referral you might not get any reply from the recruiter also the second point is uh, now let's suppose you uh, get a coding round uh, testing now there are two chances either you solve all the problems or you do not solve all the problems okay so if you do not solve all the problems there's a very high chance that you will be rejected okay because a lot of students would have solved the all the problems now if you solve all the problems so this is i am talking in terms of my uh, personal experience so there is some chance that you might still get rejected okay even if you solve all the problems because i feel that the competition is getting higher day by day so a lot of students solve all the problems in the coding round or uh, like there might be some internal criteria of the companies like uh, shortlisting students who are from prima colleges so this is something which is not in our control okay so what we can do is that we should be just perfect on dsa and just try to ace any approach like and just be ready with it so how did i overcome it 
so whenever i used to uh, experience this kind of scenario like i saw all the problems and still i uh, did not get an interview call so i just keep one thing in my mind is that uh, basically there should not be any kind of a guilt at the end of the btech that you haven't tried off campus placements so there's one thing which i put in my mind is that i will just try my level best i will just keep on applying be that much good at dsa that there will be just there like at least one company will shortlist me for the interview call so just fit this into your mind is that you just need to escape from the guilt at the end of btech that you haven't tried it so yeah this is this is how just overcome it you know i talked to a lot of people via this platform and all of them are of the same opinion that being consistent is the most important thing i mean even if you are not landing somewhere being consistent and persistent basically is what gets you somewhere and luck obviously is a very important factor for you know like you might apply to a thousand companies but you will go to that company which you are destined for i mean i am yeah. a firm believer of that so uh while you were preparing which websites and blogs did you refer to for finding job opportunities or for you know like studying and preparing yeah so for job opportunities uh basically uh i was active on linkedin okay in linkedin let's suppose there is an opening of a company x and so basically what happens is the people of that company basically write a post on linkedin that see there is this opening and i am referring for it so basically you need to be an active on linkedin so what i did is that i was really active on linkedin uh, just spam like just send a lot of invites to as much people as you can okay also i just bookmark the career pages of the companies in which i was looking forward to join them so yeah i bookmark them and every day basically i just used to see like is there any opening is there any opening so it was somewhat a kind of tiring experience so what you can do is you can just strictly reserve 80% of your day in uh, preparing for placements and 20% of the time in searching for the uh, job opportunities so this is something which i thought and what are your sources for studying and preparing yeah so basically for studying and preparing um, as i said that i used to do a lot of code chef code forces and lead code as well so basically in second year there were not that much like content available on internet which is at now at present so there's lot of content which is available at present so at that time basically what i used to do is i used to read a lot of blogs of code forces and there was one website called cpl gardens it was a really great website i would say uh, a blog like a edit a kind of explanation of a particular gardens is there and there are some problems also there which are uh, related to that particular gardens so cpl gardens is one which is really great and for mathematics part i would say the uh, number theory part like you could solve uh, the initial some of the problems of uh, project tyler it's also a great website if you are like in love with number theory it's not needed for interview preparation it's just that if you just want to be really that much good in problem solving so if you are looking for interview experiences there are just three options one is lead code okay lead code is i would say a kind of must uh, for the uh, solving interview related problems for coding round you can uh, approach to code chef code forces uh, like whatever you like yeah that's all right so as you are currently working what's the most interesting part of your job yeah so as an sd intern what i feel is like uh, being an intern there is not that much expectation in the organization okay they don't expect that you know a lot of things okay so uh, as far as my experience is concerned so they basically in the initial uh, starting phase of my internship uh they basically train me on a lot of things on a lot on a tech stack and uh, a lot of support is also available uh, to me like if i get stuck on any kind of uh, beat understanding of uh, of any topic in uh, related to tech stack so a kind of support is available and uh, then after you get familiar with the tech stack what happens is they just start assigning you a project and for the project uh, beat research like i am talking in terms of my experience so the research you have to do it on your own support is readily available so that's kind of one thing which is really great at paypal i would say so a lot of help is uh, like is available okay lot of learning opportunities are there so basically they uh, after a project is given you need to do the research as well and you need to 
implemented as well so basically you took some kind of ownership of the work so that is something which is really great right so what kind of questions were you asked during your technical round i mean you mentioned there were two technical rounds right yes right so, so what kind of extra were you asked there yeah so after the coding round i get uh, like there were two technical rounds and after two technical rounds there were two hiring manager rounds as well <laughs> yeah so okay. there were total five rounds yeah like for any person there was like four rounds but for me there were five rounds i don't know like what happened so maybe i like uh, didn't perform well in the last round that's why so yeah coming on to the technical rounds uh, i was asked uh, problems on dsa uh, if i name the topic uh, like i could not exactly name the problem but i could yeah, give a topic so it's a stacks and the ling list and a trees problem as well so something related to these topics i was asked on uh, if i talk about dsa and then i was uh, i was asked about projects as well i was asked to explain the project like uh, why did i use this and what should be the alternate uh, alternative uh, so yeah i was asked a lot of questions on projects coming on to the fundamentals uh, computer science fundamentals yeah i was asked the questions on uh, oops that is object oriented programming and uh, i was also asked questions on dbms as well and uh, yeah some questions on os yeah so that's right. the point of so question. i'm sure it's been a very long journey for you i mean first year exploring all these domains and then finally getting and setting into paypal so what kept you motivated throughout your journey so yeah so basically as i've said that uh, for me the thing is there was no kind of an option like i have to get a job okay there is no other thing which i have to do so uh basically one thing is that there is no option i have to get an offer so there you can say that it's kind of a motivation that you don't have a, a option to with you also like uh in order to stay motivated the yeah as i said that uh, the main thing which kept me motivated throughout my journey was like i had just one thing in uh, fit into my mind is that i will just try my level best okay no matter like uh like even if 99% of the companies reject me i will still apply for the 100 companies so that was something which kept me motivated that i just want to escape from the guilt uh at the end of my btech uh, i don't want to experience that kind of guilt which i had when i passed my 12th that ash if i could have worked more hard in jeans then i could have landed onto a better college so i took lesson from that and i just make sure that i don't want to be a part of guilt uh in the college journey which i had during jeans and jeans that's really true i mean a lot of people in in engineering colleges are like maybe i should work hard just because of the you know like most people don't get into colleges via je and you know like it's more like people always think that if i get a good job i can you know like do well for that so yeah i mean that's quite the common thing and it's really good that you know like you overcame your whole cycle and you got finally landed into a good company So, did you take part in the campus placements, and how was your experience? Yeah, so basically, uh, for the campus placements, I was not expecting that a lot of companies will visit my campus, but this time, yeah, a lot of companies do visit my campus, so that was really great. Uh, so basically, uh, yeah, I got an offer from on campus. Uh, it was basically ZS Associates, and uh, it was for the role of Business Technology Solutions Associate. So basically, uh, it was the fourth or fifth, I guess, fourth or fifth company which visit our campus. So yeah, I sat in that company. The company was really great, but uh, as soon as I get an offer from that company, I was looking for something more. Like uh, after ZS, a lot of companies do visit our campus. Like I was not able to sit for nine ten percent of the companies which has visited my campus. Like even uh, like uh, Amazon has visited our campus, and I was not allowed to sit for it. so lot of companies have visited but i was not allowed to sit so what i did is that i make my mind that i will go for off campus placements and try my luck and uh, and try my luck yeah and try my luck there so the parents were happy when i got settled but i was not that much satisfied so yeah to just fulfill my satisfaction i just started looking for off campus opportunities right so How important do you think a resume is in getting the whole placement procedure, and how is your resume different from that of others? Yeah, so I feel uh, if I talk about off-campus placements, so resume, yeah, it's really a important role in uh, 
getting a placement it's actually the first step if your resume doesn't get shortlisted then you will not be able to sit even for the coding round so it doesn't make sense if you have a very bad resume and if you have a great skill set so that doesn't make sense so make sure that you really uh, put a lot of work onto your resume see uh, making a resume depends on the company in which you are applying for for example uh, let's suppose if you are applying for a startup so basically for a startup what happens is uh, the projects are one thing which plays a very important role uh, even more than the dsa part so if you are aiming for startup make sure that your projects are in full highlight in their resume and make sure that you have a very great projects as well and uh, if you are looking for like a great product based company so i would say that dsa is one thing which uh, like matters the most in a resume your uh, uh, handles like in code chef or like in lead code as well it plays a very important role and also whatever achievements you have got in your journey in your coding journey be it like uh, taking part in a hackathon winning a hackathon or like uh, getting a good ratings at uh, good ratings or great ranks in google kickstart for example so yeah these play a very important role uh, coming on like how was my resume uh, so my resume was a kind of uh, more oriented towards dsa i had a lot of achievements uh, of the coding journey like uh, i got some great ranks at google kickstart and and some finalist at uh, code gladiator so yeah Uh, there were a lot of opportunities which were there listed in my uh, sorry uh, achievements which were listed in my resume so yeah it was pretty much more into dsa but yeah that doesn't mean that i didn't have projects i have projects but they were kind of moderate level they were not that good projects also they were not that bad projects so they were somewhat a kind of decent projects right so i guess that's it for the questions that i have ujwal uh before closing the session would you like to you know like give a footnote to all the people who are watching this session maybe something to motivate them yeah so basically uh one thing i would say is that uh, no matter which college you belong to uh let's suppose if you even belong to a tier 3 college uh make sure that you just work hard on your skills skills are the most important thing in the corporate journey okay so even uh if you even if you're like uh you feel that your skills are really great and you are really great at problem solving and you are not in that you are not placed in that organization uh in which you were aiming for so basically after 6 months you will definitely get the result it's that some people get late results some people get early results there there will be not a kind of this that you have a, you are really great at problem solving and you are settled for a very less company or like you are unemployed so that will never happen so make sure that you just work on your skills and uh, if you are aiming for off campus placement all you need is patience i would say patience uh, a lot of patience is tested in off campus okay uh, yeah so yeah make sure that you are patient enough and just keep on applying so thank you ujwal i mean i guess a lot of people learned a lot of things from you today and i hope a lot of people get inspired by your journey for all those who are you know like just starting their careers who are just starting their journeys this webinar i hope will be a lot beneficial so thank you so much for answering all of my questions and for such an informative session and thank you for everyone who was watching us uh, like for this whole time um so i guess that's it thank you yeah thank you Bye -bye. so much